Tropical Storm Lisa officially formed in the Caribbean earlier on Monday, and it could become a hurricane as it closes in on Belize. Anywhere from northern Honduras through Belize and into the southern part of the Yucatan Peninsula could feel impacts as we move closer to Wednesday and Thursday. I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and we talk and track all things weather. For us in Jamaica, it shouldn't be too, too bad, but the southern side of the island could have some gusty outer rain bands. There are also indications long range the next couple of weeks into the middle of November that we are still going to keep things relatively active in the Caribbean. We're going to break that part down towards the end of the video. Of course, the most pressing thing is Tropical Storm Lisa. The good thing is it's not looking all that healthy right now, and that was to be expected if you're with us during the live broadcast on Saturday. We were talking that there was going to be dry air, some wind shear, limiting the strength, especially in the short term. Here is Jamaica to the north. Some of those outer rain bands, if you will, are pushing through the southern part of the island, especially. The center of circulation is right in here. There are some new thunderstorms firing around that, but... Notice where we're looking at out here. That is an indication that there is still a ton of dry air that this thing is going to be moving into. The dry air is on full display here on the water vapor imagery. We can see where Lisa is. Here is that green blob. That is the moisture being produced there by the tropical storm. But all of this orange out ahead of it is the dry air that Lisa is going to have to contend with really for the rest of its life. Here, of course, is Belize and the Central American coastline. And again, I don't want to give a false sense of security here. We do need to be making our preparations through parts of the Yucatan, certainly into Belize and northern Honduras. But nonetheless, I do think there are questions as to how strong this thing could actually get as it hopefully continues to ingest a lot of this dry air. Here is the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Remember, the cone again accounts for the forecast error on where the center could track. Impacts are felt outside of the cone. As we move into tomorrow at 8 o'clock, the symbol for tropical storm there represents where the center is expected to be by 8 o'clock on your Tuesday morning. As we move forward in time here, this is still expected, Lisa is, to be a tropical storm by the time we get into Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the morning as well. You see the tropical storm symbol. The darker the color here, the stronger the winds. And as we move into Wednesday afternoon and really as we get into Wednesday evening, that's when we could be looking at Lisa strengthening into a hurricane just before landfall. Whether it does or does not, the impacts are going to be the same from a strong tropical storm to a low-grade hurricane, so preparations should be the same. Again, prepare for very heavy rain, potential for hurricane force winds, and again, storm surge coming in right along the coast. We're taking a look at the high-resolution future radar, and I mentioned that Lisa may take its time to organize. Again, that is a good thing, but gradual strengthening is forecast one of the potential outcomes of this is to be at the strongest point of its life right before landfall, and we're watching that very closely. Watch what happens here. We're starting this early in the morning on Wednesday at 2 a.m., but watch what happens. It starts to get that hurricane look as we move into Wednesday afternoon. That's 2 o'clock, and then right before the landfall in and around Belize, and looks to be closer to Belize City, at least in this uh, representation. There is 8 o'clock in the evening on Wednesday. You see it really forming that eye. So while it is battling some wind shear and dry air right now, there is an opportunity for this to get into a much better environment right before landfall and start to rapidly strengthen. That is something that we are going to watch very closely as we move into Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening especially. If you are finding this video helpful in any way, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. So again, the focus over the next couple of days will be our friends in Central America as Lisa moves in our direction. But I mentioned earlier in the video that we will have the opportunity for things to remain relatively active. We are looking at the anomaly now for upper level divergence, for air to diverge upstairs, if you will. The air needs to converge at the surface, which will promote thunderstorm development and potentially consolidate into a tropical system given the environment. Anyway, we're looking for the green here specifically, and the darker the greens and blues, the bigger the anomaly and the higher potential we have to have that inclement weather. So this is going through the first week of November, and you see it there mainly north of South America and into parts of the Caribbean. 
And then look at that flare up there, really all the way through northern South America, through most of the Caribbean, and then even into the western Atlantic. So now we're looking at the ensembles, and I always talk about, in order for models to mean something, you need to know what the environment is doing to tell the whole story. So I'm going to show you the next couple of chapters here. As we move into the first week of November, this is on November 3rd and 4th. And there is a little something brewing in there, but nonetheless, as we move further out into the future, and specifically with this model, we are looking for these tiny circles indicating where the model is biting on. Right now, there's a lot of noise out there as it tries to figure something out. But as we move into November 12th and 13th, you see some more consolidation, really three areas pop off the southeast coast and the western Caribbean, and then also in the Eastern Caribbean. Not saying that there was going to be three storms at once. It's likely, again, the model different ensembles seeing where a center could be developing. But there is a high probability that we're going to see some extra development as we move into the middle of November as a result of that convective pulse that moves across the world, known as the MJO, really focusing now on the Caribbean and extreme western Atlantic. That's something we are also going to be watching over the next couple of weeks. The tropics this year got off to a really slow start. We had that big jump in activity with Fiona and Ian, and now it looks like the tropics aren't going to go away quietly with Lisa and the potentially at least one more storm to come, maybe more. It's something we're going to be watching closely again on this channel. If you liked what you saw here, if you like this channel and just like following the weather, we would love to have you on board. Please hit the like button. That does help us out a ton. And again, track the weather with us as we always do together. Please hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you on this channel.